So let me model a cup with a handle. <laughs> and it will be subdivided. First thing I do, I set I make a project. This will be my kitchen. And I'm just gonna do what I always do. Seventeen oh nine oh six. And I'll just store this for now locally and you should make a habit of storing things on the server. But uh, let's see maybe yeah, let's put it on D. And save a scene. I'm gonna save it as a Maya ASCII file. Seventeen oh nine oh six. This is going to be kitchen oh one. I think, yeah, it's a binary, it doesn't matter. Okay, so obviously I'm just gonna make use of some primitive to make the cup, so I have a starting point. I'm just gonna make use of, why not the polygonal cylinder? And there we go. So to get that on top of the grid, just quickly I can hold D and I can hold V and I can snap the pivot point to the bottom and then I can hold X and I can snap it there. Now when I scale, it's going to scale based on that pivot, so that's also kind of nice for now if I want to just nail the scale. So if I want to set up Maya to be working in the correct measures, I could have done that, but I'm not going to, not going to bother with that right now. Let me just quickly hammer out something that looks like a cup. So let me just, let me just delete the top faces. So if I just... Uh, Selection marquee, select something, it selects a bunch of faces if I'm in face mode. And then I can control and selection marquee to deselect. So now I'm left with only those and I can just delete those. Then I go to vertex mode and I'm going to scale in holding control while I'm scaling in Y. So that's going to scale in X and Z simultaneously. So I'm holding control and I'm scaling on the Y axis. This actually means not do not scale the Y axis. So there, I'm working with a flat model, which I like to do, so there's no thickness. I just made a cylinder, so these are all flat planes, just making out the shape of a cup. So what I will be doing eventually, let me just make a copy of this, Control D, and I'll just show you. If you're in object mode, and I do an extrude, so Control E, and I use here the thickness, it's going to create the thickness throughout the object. So there we have a legal mesh, I press number 3, I can subdivide it. It's going to look funky here because that's just due to the, you know, if I wanted this kind of a shape, that would be nice. But I, if I don't want it, I have to change the uh, topology down here. But anyways, but I'm not going to do that yet. So here we go. There's the cup. So if I, well, let's see, thickness. If I hold control, I can also have a more subtle way of sliding this. Yeah, okay, let me just add the thickness now. I'll get it done with. There it is. Again, I'm going to change the pivot. So I'm going to hold D, hold V, snap to the bottom. Oops. And then hold X and snap that on the grid. And I'm going to add the usual things. So delete history, uh, freeze transformations, uh, center pivot. I'll just add these to the shelf here. Making sure to delete history once in a while so that it doesn't fill up here. And also I'm going to freeze the transformation. So these are very nice things to do to keep things tidy. All right, so I'm going to start thinking about a handle for the cup. So let's see. So the C axis is pointing that way. So this is the front of the cup. So, you know, where the handle is going to be, I don't know. I'm just going to put it here on the side. So it doesn't really matter. So I already added the insert edge loop tool. It's right there. Control shift click so you can add anything to the shelf. So here. I'm just going to add something. Maybe the, maybe this uh, cylinder, though, it's a little... There's too many loops for my liking. So can I quickly... No, I can't quickly do that. So then I'm going to change my mind, which is kind of nice, because I'm going to show you some quick selection methods. So what if I would just want to select those interior phases? So I can obviously go to phase mode and start shift-clicking, which is very inefficient uh, or I can what if I click once and 
shift double click, it'll select the face path. So that, that was quicker. I can also select a vertex and then control right click and I can select, I can change that selection to become a different type of selection. So then I can select those faces. So that's often kind of useful as if I select that vertex and then just convert that selection to be a selection of faces. So control right click and hold and you can change the selection to become another type of selection. And then we have a way to grow the selection. So I can shift and the button right next to the shift button on the left side is uh, like greater than, smaller than uh, symbol. And then you can use that to grow the selection. If you just click shift and what's that? What is that? The formal name of that button? I don't know. Shift and greater than symbol. And then you will grow the selection or shrink the selection if you just click the symbol. So that's a very quick way to make large selections like this. And then I can shift select the rest and delete it. So now I'm back with this guy. And now it's much easier for me to go in here and make changes. I don't have to worry about the, the thickness yet. So if I, let's say I wanted to like delete every other one of these. Granted, I would have done this when I made the cylinder primitive. If I had thought about this, I would have made it so that it would have less uh, resolution, right? The cylinder. But here I'm going to make sure not to delete these edges. So this is this is also something you should always remember. So like we were saying in the lecture, keep a dividing line. It's very often very useful. So when you're working with circular objects, one thing is that you keep it to even numbers. So don't use odd numbers. Use even numbers for the for the segment. And don't I'm not going to delete this edge because that edge is happen it's right on the symmetrical axis and also this edge. So I'd like to keep those two, right? But then if I want to make this a lower resolution, then I'm going to select this, maybe this. Uh, well, let's see. Screw this. I will make a new cylinder. Cylinder. And in the cylinder primitive, once I just make a cylinder, I go here and I see subdivision axes. And typically when you start out modeling, you don't want to start out too, with too many polys. So I'm just going to make like eight divisions. Very, very simple little thing. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll delete the top faces. I'll select the bottom birds. I'll scale them in and I'll move them down to the grid holding X. There we go. So now I'm back. It's just that it has less resolution and I can do the thickness again. So if I wanted to, I could do it outward. If I wanted to do it inward, I'm actually inverting the mesh, right? Because now I'm seeing the back faces. So I push it out, but I can also push it in if I wanted to, if I'm happy with the placement of the cup, right? And then granted, I have an inverted cup, but then I need to go mesh tools or sorry, uh, where is it? Mesh display, normals, reverse. Now the normals are reversed and that's fine. And I can delete history. So whenever you do all these, uh, all these tools just make a habit of delete history, also freeze transformations again. So there I'm back. This is my new starting point. So what I like to do when I work is just uh, I make copies of things and I throw that over there. Just you know, this is stage one. Well, actually stage two then because I have thickness. So I would have copied it earlier. Let's save the scene. So even though you're doing simple little objects, like when you're starting out modeling, this is a challenge and you have to just start building these uh, simple shapes. And now I'm gonna start thinking about the handles. So I'm gonna insert some edge loops. Well, first of all, let's, let's talk about the creasing edges. So I'm gonna subdivide this, it looks like that. If I insert some more edge loops up here, it will retain this curvature more. So if I press number three, that's what it does. Maybe I want to retain this curvature as well as so I put one creasing edge on the inside. And I can also put one up here if I wanted that really crisp edge. Now it's going to look like that. Or fewer of them if, it wants, if I want it to be slightly more curved like that. So remember, if you want an even smoother preview of this, I can hit Control A and go into the Smooth Mesh Preview options, and I could set this to Subdivision Level Three if I wanted to. So remember, this is exponentially growing; like it's quadrupling with every number here. So don't go crazy with this. 
one number, it's, it's a great improvement. But now you can see a much smoother preview because there's more polys, right? Because it's, it's quadrupling three times. And then also to keep the curvature at the bottom, I can insert an edge loop there. So I'm just hitting Y to access the same tool again. And there we go. So now it looks, starts looking like a nice little cup. And if you want it to be more creative, like if I wanted more to play around with the curvature, I can add an edge loop. But I would have done this earlier, right? I would have done this on the flat version and played with the curvature, right? So now that I have thickness, it's not too late though. You can grab all the birds and now I'm, I'm just, okay, so I don't have an edge loop in there. I could play as an edge loop in there precisely where the other one is, like that, and then do vertex and select all those verts. And I now click scale. Okay, so obviously, nope, I need to place it on the right edge in here. Actually, uh, I'm just going to show you a bunch of uh, tricks here. How do I move this edge around without, without moving the contours? So I place an edge here, right? I place an edge loop here. I want to move this edge loop down, but I don't want to change the contours. If I use the move tool, it's just going to move down. It's going to change the contours because it's moving along the world Y axis, right? It's not following that already established form, the contour of the cup. That's why we have something called slide edge tool, which I don't know where they put. Here it is, slide edge. So I added it here. So if you select the edge loop, you select slide edge loop tool, then you can use middle mouse button and you can start sliding the edge around and it will follow the contours. So it's a pretty neat tool. So if I do that and I go wireframe mode, I can place the edge loop on the inside if I wanted to. Anyway, just an opportunity to mention some different tools here, but now I can change the contours here because I have an edge loop on the inside and the outside. Something like that. So, okay. So let's say, let's save the scene again. So just establishing this form, you know, takes a little bit of trial and error and just get it done. And press three, you see nice subdivided result. You have thickness started out from a planar model, but now I want to add a handle. So it's just going to be a handle sticking out of here. Boom. And it needs to be attached to the model, obviously, because it is like merged to the model. It's not a separate piece. It's the same glass object, so or ceramic or whatever, whatever, whatever it is. So okay, but I obviously need more polys. So maybe if I smooth it, I can try to do that. Remember, smooth that will also uh, quadruple the poly count, but it will actually. Uh, you can't revert back. Well, you can undo, but not like pressing three and one. But now I have more polys. So that's a quick way of doing that. And now I have, for instance, this could be the basis for like the top portion of the handle. So typically, like I said, work with even numbers and try uh, start out with small numbers. So if I select these two polys, how many vertices, if I if I just delete them, how many vertices am I left with? Whoops, looks like Maya's gonna crash. Yep. <laughs> Have you been experiencing Maya crashing a lot? Not yet. Okay, okay, that's good. Because uh, uh, my colleague was experiencing that today. And it seems like it crashed. So, yay. But let me just recreate that quickly. So that's part of the part of the game here. You just save often. Uh, you, you save iteratively so that if the scene file gets corrupt, you can go back to the previous iteration. And I didn't follow my own advice, and I hadn't saved it, so now I have to. I did save it, but a while ago. I don't know if the recording could be messing things up. I don't know. Probably not. But I'm going to go set project, and I just stored this locally. 
No. Yes. Oh, you can. But hit set first. Oh, recent. Oh, yeah. The, so there's a tab called recent projects. Well, that's nice. But it's not showing me anything currently. Cool. Yeah. So that that that's nice. So okay. Let me just. Uh, Ah, it's taking too long. Let me recreate this thing. So eight uh, divisions. You'd be amazed how difficult it is making a cup. Put, move the verts down. Scale these up. There we have it, the beginnings. This will be. I can make a copy of this. I'll throw it to the side over there. And then maybe I'll delete the top faces. Do an extrude in object mode, use thickness, and I want some more edge loops. So I will do some edge loops. So, okay, now I'm going to save the scene. So I added some more edge loops. I'm actually going to opt to smooth it though. So I'm going to add one edge loop here before I smooth it. Then I'll hit smooth. Then I need some more edge loops first because I want creasing edges on the top. And also I'm going to place a creasing edge down there and here. And how can I place a creasing edge underneath here? Because I can't really just do the insert edge loop tool here. See that? Yeah, exactly. So I can select these or I could select that vert and grow the selection and then do an extrude and use thickness or I'm sorry, offset inward. And that's a way to create that internal edge loop. So there's my cup, and I can copy that. And now I'm going to save again. I'm going to delete history. I'm going to freeze the transformations. OK, and then if I try to smooth this, it should look pretty good. So this is the starting point, finally, of my handle. So if I delete those, and I can go So that's currently, what is it, six vertices. So that's OK. Uh, I guess I, I think I want eight vertices if I wanted more of like a circular. Six is OK, right? If you think about the least amount of vertices in a circular, like opening would probably be like six if you're using even numbers. Four is a plane. But I'm going to use the slide edge tool again. So slide edge tool and slide this down a little bit. So we haven't really talked about this, but there's something about the pol polygonal spacing, like the spacing of the polys. So I'm trying to make these kind of even. I'm just sliding these around. Let's see now if I can have one more edge loop there. And then this will be the starting point four of those. So if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I have eight vertices. So how, you know, how can I make this in circular, more circular? If you have Maya 2018, it seems like you have a nice circular feature, which is great. It seems really nice. But now I'm going to use, I'm going to be snapping to a cylinder. So then you have to sort of this is obviously going to have eight subdivision axes. 
corresponding to the number of vertices. So the number of vertices in the eight subdivision axis cylinder is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I can rotate this. If I hit E, hold E, and left mouse button, click and hold, I can do discrete rotate, just to make it snap. Or I could enter it numerically, but this is a little quicker. And then I can use the orthographic views, sort of, to help me align this. So I could obviously just snap it the way it is, depending on how I want that circular opening. Or I could carefully select these vertices and be rotating them a little bit. Now I can turn off discrete rotate. So if I want that circular opening to be more like this, so I can be very manual, very precise about the way I want this to be. So let's say I wanted it to be something like that. So now I have the option to, either I can start snapping these vertices right now, or I can make uh, select this entire edge loop, just double click that edge loop, which is now the opening, and then do an extrude, right? And then do an offset. So I like to hold control when I use these sliders, so it slides a little easier. And then these could be the words that I would snap to the object. So I'm just holding, I'm using the move tool and I'm holding V and I'm, I'm uh, using, uh, holding V, holding, holding V and middle mouse button. And then you can snap to these points that are just in there. And I could do it to the other side as well, or I can use the mirror option. Right now I would have just kept snapping, but let's just use the mirror option so we can try that. So I would just delete the half of the cup. And like I said, it's, we do have a dividing line there for the symmetry, so that's very nice. So delete history. So this is how you start building these symmetrical objects. You know, so now we have this piece. It's still a separate object, but all the verts, well, except this one, I need to snap it. See, I'm building this in two steps. So sometimes if you have more complicated shapes, uh, it could be beneficial to sort of divide the task into several little tasks. So here, it does need to eventually be a part of the same object. So there's a bit of a math you have to do to think, okay, I need eight vertices. If it were six, it would be six vertices or 10 or 12. But typically, I think for the most part, you will be, eight is very common when you're doing this low polygonal cage models. Okay, so let me just copy those guys as well. So we see the evolution here, so copy. Control D just to copy things. Good, so let's mirror. And they had the new mirror tool here and it seemed to work pretty good. So uh, right now I'm doing it in Z, right? But it's gonna be negative, negative Z. Apply. Uh, did not do a tremendous job. I'm probably doing it wrong, but it, you know, I do like the mirror geometry tool that used to be here better. Z minus combine merge border. Uh, okay, let's try it. So it messes it up here. Yeah, so might have to, right. So remember, I, I mentioned in the lecture that sometimes you have to be careful with the merge threshold. So this is one of those instances where it messed it up and I had to go into the channel box where you'll find the, a lot of settings for the most recent operation. And this is the merge threshold. So the merge threshold, it's kind of like a radius in which it looks for vertices to merge. You know, it, it's merging the vertices along the middle. So if I increase the merge threshold, uh, hello. See, it starts messing things up. It used to be able to just increase it a whole lot and then it would merge everything to one point. And now I guess it's set to merge only the border vertices or something, which makes sense because I don't want to merge the other ones. Well, it should still merge into one point. So that's why I'm not understanding this. It doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, that's it. It's been merged. So let's try it again. With this one, we'll use the mirror and we'll make a button for it. And we'll lower the threshold. 
delete history, and then we'll try to press number three. So pressing number three then is a very nice way to see, you know, if all the vertices are merged, like we talked about also. If something's fishy, if this didn't happen correctly, and sometimes this can happen to the mirror operations, like some of these points might not be merged. So I'm going to in intentionally now just do um, detach, so components detach. So I'm detaching that vertex point and press number three and you'll see artifacts like this. See that doesn't look good. It's supposed to look like that. Everything just flows nicely together. Here fishy stuff happens and it's because this vertex it's is not merged. And you can see that again heads up display poly count. Uh, I'm sorry it's under windows. Where is it? No it's heads up display poly count right there. So we can see these are now four vertices, but there should be one. So I'm going to go edit mesh merge. And now it should be back. So you need to be able to go in there sometimes and manually select vertices to merge back together. So let me make a copy of that. This is so the evolution of the cup. So now uh, let's look at something else. So uh, now I'm going to attach this object to this object. I'm going to make these two into the same object in Maya. The way to do that is to combine them. <laughs> we have something called mesh combine and separate to separate them again. But uh, so the first thing I'm really paying attention to is I don't need these internal faces. So I'm going to de delete these so that I'm only left with this. And I actually I could have done this before I mirrored, right? But let's, let me just do it now. No, let me mirror again after. So I'll delete half of it. So select this, shift select this, and just click combine. So you shift select both of them, hit combine. So now if you look in the outliner, they will be technically one object in Maya. So even though they're one object, they're still technically two separate meshes because they're not merged together. So this is what the separate, op the separate option will do. It takes this singular object and it just looks at it and it, it's able to recognize that, well, even though it's one object, it actually consists of two separate meshes because the vertices have not been merged. So if I do separate, it's going to do this. It's going to put them back in a group. I have two separate objects again. But I also have this strange transform node, which we don't need. To get rid of the transform node, we select all the objects and hit delete history. Now I'm left with, again, just two separate objects, but they're in a group. Get them out of the group, I can select the object. Shift P is to unparent. Now they're out of that group. And delete, delete the group. So anyway, so, but I want them <laughs> together. So shift select both, combine. Now they're technically one mesh. But what you need to do is delete history. So you see you get these strange transform nodes when you're doing these, this operation. Delete history. Now it's good. Now they're one object, but I do need to merge the vertices right here. Okay, so press number three, you'll see. It doesn't seem crazy, but you can see that there's a very straight edge there. So that tells me they're not merged. It shouldn't look like that. So I'll go in and I will merge. And I made a hotkey for it, so mesh, uh, edit mesh, components, merge. I made a, that button. So I can go selection marquee, you'll see it tells me it's two. Merge, now it's one. And then I can go wireframe just to make sure I don't hit more vertices, right? Because if I do this, it just selects through the model. So hit number four to go to wireframe. Select this and I can hit G. G is the hotkey to just to repeat the last operation. So remember Y was the hotkey for to get the, the last used tool. But now we're just going to repeat an operation. So the operation was merge. So I'm just hitting G. That's going to merge these. So now I'm merging all the way around, and I can delete history again. Press number three, 
So now you see a very different subdivision result. It's just doing this nice continuous subdivision pattern. Right? So let me copy this. <laughs> so you'll see a lot of steps here. Subdividing the whole thing now looks like that. So I'm going to do a mirror. Let me go into options for the mirror and I will do If I could do a custom, this would be the merge threshold, I guess. So I can set that to one. Yeah, and then I don't have to worry about it. And then I'll make a button for that. So mirror, I have a button with those settings. I'll delete this button. So now that's mirror with the settings I want. Subdivide it, looks like that. And then I can start changing the size of this thing. That's obviously not too late. So how do I change the size of it? I need to scale these poly polys or these vertices. So if I select these phases, I can hit uh, scale, I hold control and I scale in these two axes. So I'm scaling in X and Z. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Y and Z at the same time. So if you hold control, scale in X, it means do not scale in X. Hold control, scaling these two axes is going to make it smaller. Then I can subdivide, see what it looks like. I can also make it flatter if I scale that way. So, you know, now you see it starts maybe turning into more of a shape that I need. So this is just how you need to play around with the, the what we call the polygonal cage, the, the poly model to make it look the way you want when you subdivide. So you sometimes have to go back and forth a little bit, see what it looks like. Like I said in the lecture, you don't want to m just keep working only in number three because you you're not really paying attention to what the kind of mesh you're building. So that's really it for this, the procedure of, of doing that. So, I mean, I could have, I could now use, I guess, this same little piece and I'm just being creative with this. I can grow that selection. Now I have this piece. And I could move that down here and sort of use that here. And then I'll delete this and this and this and this. Oops. Don't crash again. I will be annoyed. OK. So um, I'm going to save. going to make a copy. You don't have to keep making copies. I'm doing this more to show the stages here. But I like having copies around. So maybe that's the bottom part. So the way I just copied that into place. And now I could just snap these words to these ones. holding V and middle mouse button while I'm in the move tool will do that. So sometimes it's turning on wireframe unshaded for this is nice because you can see the wireframes even though you deselect the model. Whoops. So there we go. And then again, I'm just going to select both of them. I'm going to delete history. And I'm going to select both, hit combine, oops, and delete history again. And we need to merge the vertices. Just be careful when you're selecting vertices that you're selecting the vertices you want. that you don't have any other ones selected. So some, I think it's necessary to go. And you don't want to, when you're selecting two vertices like that to be merged, you need to do like a selection marquee and not just a single click. Because if you single click, you'll only select one of the vertices. And then it should work to just merge them all in one operation. 
Let me double check. Yeah, so that's one, that's one, that's one. Yep. And then press number three. So that's the subdivided result. All right, so now we're missing the handle, but we have merged. This is probably the most difficult part because we've merged everything together. So different ways of doing this. I could have also had a slightly different approach, but I'm just sort of, this would be one way. Uh, let me show you how we can actually extrude and follow a curve. It's kind of a nice feature. So, Okay, so if this, this ever happens, it's just in a different panel layout. So when I hit spacebar, it's no longer giving me the orthographic views. But if you click here, this is sort of a single panel layout, and this is a four panel layout. So click here. It should give you uh, all the orthographic views back. This is the single. This is So spacebar is just to go quickly between the recently selected one. So if I click here and I click, if I click here and I click here, now I should be able to use spacebar. No, I'm not. Okay, great. So, um, okay, so if you hover the mouse over the orthographic views, that's how you can enter the different views. If I'm here, I'll hit spacebar, I'm in there. I hit spacebar, okay. So, I need to be in the front view because that's where I have this precisely placed. So when you're using curves, it's really important to be using the orthographic views. So I'm gonna be using right now a curve tool, CV curve tool. So I'm going to start placing this. So you need a starting point and then just start the curve with a point that's not too far apart from the starting point. And I'm going to start uh, establishing the curve. And then same for the end point, you probably just want a couple of points a bit closer together. Like that. And then I can go right click control vertex and I can change the curvature to my liking. So CV curve and the placement of these control vertices kind of matter because that's going to be defining your uh, edge loops eventually. So there's my curve. So if I go and double check in world space in the perspective view, it's kind of nicely placed. So now I'm going to be able to actually go to number one on this object and just select these uh, edges, shift select the curve and hit extrude. So initially it seems really weird because it just extrudes it straight to the end of the curve. But you do need more divisions. So in the extrude operation, you just hit division and just use left mouse button. You can slide that up. Like that. So then you also have uh, other functions uh, in this. If you go under poly extrude, if I'm not going to use it, but just to mention it while we're talking about extrude along curve, you need to go into the channel box and you see you have like twist. And if you use middle mouse button, you can do you can twist that around. It's pretty cool, and you can do taper, which will taper one of the ends. It's so very uh, useful. Uh, yep. <laughs> Okay, and I and since the history is still enabled, I can actually go in here and if I hit number four and I carefully I'm gonna be a little bit careful, I can select the curve and then right click and hold over the curve. So I'm just being careful I'm over the curve, I'm not over the polygonal object. Then I'm gonna be able to access the control vertices and I can still move the curve around and you'll see me moving the polygonal object. So if I hit a uh, space bar so I can see both of them at the same time. This could be a nice way to look to, to get that precise curve I need. So, yep. So, but I want, now I just want to break the connection to the curve, and that's the CCS hitting uh, delete history. So now there's no connection. So if I move the curve around, I will only move the curve around. Nothing happens to the object. Oops. 
Okay, so <laughs> there is a filter up here to turn off. So if I temporarily don't want to be selecting polygons, I can click here. So see, I move the curve, nothing happens, just the curve moves. So I can delete the curve. See it right there in the outliner, get rid of it. And now I just need to merge this here. <laughs> so these techniques, you know, it's very manual. You have to, seems like new Maya is coming with a bit more like user-friendly <laughs> uh, operations like the, but what's nice about this is that you really, you get an understanding of how to work with uh, geometry and you can force it to sort of do whatever you want. So then I can select all these verts and just do merge and hit number three to see if that worked. Oh, I deselected this one. So, and there you go. So now it's all connected. It's a legal mesh. Uh, there's thickness to it. So I can actually go inside. So it's what we call, remember I call it manifold mesh. So everything is, it makes sense. I can go in here, there's thickness. I can, we can go inside and travel down the handle. Yeah, so this is what you want. There's even thickness at the bottom. We can go inside it. If I didn't have thickness at the bottom, when I looked inside the cup, I would have seen the back faces. But this is its own surface up there. And I have another one at the bottom. So yeah, then it would take some more uh, fiddling around with the curvature to make that look the way I want. So sometimes probably I would have to go in here and be a bit more manual, you know, just keep moving vertices around. Sometimes, oftentimes, uh, that's what you do in the end, right? It's like, you just have to make it the way you want. But I can also scale these edges, for instance. So scale them in on themselves. would be another option. Yep. And Yeah, there would be, there's another approach I could have taken to this, uh, which I also like. But yeah, I think, I think that's a nice little exercise to try to make, because uh, this is a pretty complicated shape when you, you have a subdivided model and you needed to be attached and this there's no way you could have made this handle be a separate object well you could but it would look strange could you have made a donut and chopped it in half? yes you could have made a donut chopped it in half put it in there and so uh, on the was it a torus like a donut shape primitive you go in here and you change the subdivisions to eight for instance do that and you can also change let's turn on this rotate and do uh, radius turn down or up the radius and there's a selection read to make it thinner all right so here I can also up the division axis so maybe if I'm clever at it I would have a dividing line right there and then I can delete half and yeah so that would be pretty efficient right much better approach probably than all I was doing. Yeah, so sometimes you can really save time if you think about it. Are there some of the primitives that could help you out? You can merge things together. You can do whatever you want. So be creative with this. Think outside the box. Um, so another approach I could have taken was to build this flat, which I kind of like sometimes. Because if I really care about the curvature of the thing, I would have made a plane with no divisions. And I would simply make start making the curvature. So I'm, I'm looking at the interior curve. 
this is a little wonky, but it's it's pretty quick, I promise. I'm looking at the internal curve. And then there's my curve. And then I select this edge that I like, which is this one. And then I extrude and I can use like uh, an offset on that. And then I'll just delete this junk. So when you start, if, if the curvature here really mattered, you know, this, and I would just spend time really massaging the curvature before I do anything else. So this would be sort of a different way of going about it. And then before I did any sort of thickness and then object mode extrude there's the thickness and then to make eight divisions is pretty simple so if I double click the edge loop I can do multiple edge loops one I'll do one here and I need one more here so now I have eight at uh, vertices And then if I subdivide it, it'll look like that. And so I would, you know, I kind of like this approach, but starting with planes because it's, uh, or extrude along curve is also kind of nice sometimes, but uh, you can spend more time getting that uh, curvature just the way you want it initially, also with planes, it's alternative. So that was the evolution of the cup. As you can see, I so I like treating this more like my workbench and just throwing things around, keeping copies of things, but I'm always working centered in the grid. So when I'm working, I'm not over here working. It's very beneficial to be centered in the grid and also that this, even if this cup were to be finally on top of the table, it would be very inefficient to be modeling this off grid, and especially if it's like rotated or something. Never, never, never. Just work centered in the grid. You make the objects, and then it would have been it would have been exported to the scene, obviously, if it were a part of something else. So to export this thing, I can actually select the thing. So let me just save the scene. So you see, I started with a cylinder. There was a second stage, which was just this, <laughs> deleting that phase. And then add thickness and creasing edges. So extruded this in object mode. When you extrude it in object mode, it will just do a global thickness. And I can use thickness down here if I want. Hold control to have a more subtle effect. Start adding creasing edges. Using insert edge loop tool up here double click the insert edge loop tool to get the tool options and I can go relative distance from edge. It lets me just place an edge loop wherever I want. So I place an edge loop up there and also on the inside and I placed one in the middle just to get more of an even polygon distribution before I hit smooth. And then place one at the bottom to keep that keep that curvature. And to make the, that one at the bottom, again, I selected all these bottom ver uh, faces to do that, I quickly I can select one vert, control right click, convert the selection to phases, do an extrude, and use a offset. That was that step. And then, you know, divide it in half. I, ha I made sure I had a dividing line. So I hit smooth once because I needed more polys to work with. And then I deleted half. And I started making that opening, which was the basis for that were these. Well, no, I actually, yeah. So I, I manually made a more even polygon distribution. And to do that, I was sliding the edges around. So that was the slide edge tool, which is often very nice because you can move the edges around the object without modifying the contours. So that's really good. So. Any questions about this? Many, many questions. There will be a lot of issues, so you just have to try this. If you do this cup 
you know what you need to do to make a teapot. <laughs> and this is sort of the basis for everything that you'll be doing. So let me just quickly show you, let's just imagine this were, because I'm running out of time here. So if this were a teapot, it would also have a handle. I would add other elements. I could have spent similar time on the spout and let's just make a quick lid just to show you just how you can think about this. So if I, if I needed a lid on this cup, it would be a separate object. It's not going to be welded together with the cup. So quickly, are there any elements from this cup I could have used? Yeah, maybe. So if I do like, let me just quickly select this and then I have these and I can scale them in and I can move these up and snap to vert these verts. So there I have sort of the basis for what could have be a lid, right? And then I can fill that hole. There's, I could probably be much more efficient at this, but just get going. Like there's so many different ways. Let me add cut faces tool. Uh, Multi-cut is what it's called now. Well, it used to be called insert edge or something. Multi multi-cut. Multi-cut. Not working. Should work. Okay, there it worked. So just hover over the vertices. So I'm just making whoops. Connecting these. So if you don't hit enter, it will just keep there. So now I have quads there. You see if you count these one, two, three, four. Looking strange, but there are there are quads. Really? Oh, right, I missed it. Oh, thank you. So then you got to be careful because then you're leaving also behind vertices. See that? Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, so these I can probably merge to center. Merge to center. Where are you? And then I'll do this again. Thank you. So, and then, all right, kind of works. But anyway, so that's flat version, and then I can do extrude in object mode. And how do I get an edge loop out here? Because I can't insert an edge loop for my, well, I can, sorry. I just, <laughs> I just made the topology. Anyways, but, uh, okay, so I do this. I wanted to show you, though, like sometimes you can select the outer, uh, face path is pretty efficient. So I can shift select quickly, it will select everything, do an extrude, do thickness, and extrude again, offset, and now I can subdivide. Kind of funky, admittingly, uh, topology in there, but I'll hold that in place. But this is how you get started, just building, building, building. So now I have a lid. Can I extrude this part up? Let me take this vert and two faces and shrink that a little bit. So do that. Nice. Now it's like a one of those coffee cups you get in a gas station. At least in Norway. Doot. And maybe there's a rubber band between here. How can we make the rubber band? Well, I can copy this guy and I can select quickly this face path. So click once, shift select, it'll select the face path and I'll delete everything else. But this is everything I need. And then I can do extrude outward. And I'll just extrude a couple of times more, at least once, and I'll do offset. And there's my creasing edge. And then I can subdivide this thing. And there's my rubber band. I will do center pivot. Freeze transformations. Well, doesn't matter. There's my little rubber band. Scaling carefully. And make this a little smaller, maybe. Yeah. 
Sometimes it's easier scaling the verts. Not now. Okay, uh, actually, sometimes it's e easier. This is just a little uh, detail workflow tip. But if you use m a left mouse button to scale, sometimes it's more accurate if you, this is the recently selected axis. So if I now use middle mouse button, it will also scale. And I can, it's, I don't know if it's just me, but I think I can be a little more accurate with that. I think it uses less increments, perhaps. And then go to center pivot, free transformations, delete history. All right, so now I have that little thing. So you, you can get pretty detailed with this. Maybe there's a, like a decal over the thing, so I can copy this again. I'll, or let's make something at the bottom. So I'll do this face path. Press zero, it will go back. So whatever this is, something. Right. And there's our cup. So I delete history, freeze transformation, center the pivot on all these objects. That's the things I do. Delete history, freeze transformation, center pivot. And now I can export this thing. So I'm saving the scene. This is just my work scene. It has everything in here. But I can do a selection of this. And I'll export it. Export selection. And yeah, I can export it actually as a Maya file. But I, let's do... Let's export it as something called an OBJ. OBJ stands for object, and it's the most used uh, format for geometrical data. So it will export the geometry and the UVs and the shading, uh, the normal information. But uh, actually to export OBJs, we have to enable it. So we go Windows, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager. So we go open the plugin manager and it will show you a lot of different plugins that are not loaded necessarily. So we need to find something called OBJ export right here. Yeah, it's loaded. Okay. I didn't see it. Oh, great. So, <laughs> so that makes total sense. Oh yeah, there it is. OBJ export. So then you don't have to worry about it. it. Used to be that it didn't, it wasn't enabled, which was never made any sense. It's like if JPEG weren't loaded in Photoshop by default. Yeah. Anyways, don't need the material. You can leave all these other ones and just export this. This is my cup and O1. Then I can do a new scene. This is my new fresh scene. Let's actually open, see if I can set the project and I'll try to find the scene from this morning where I made a chair halfway. Let's see if I can find it. Teaching. Uh, it was. Oh, th I didn't save it to the server. I think. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Anyway, so you have a scene. We can just import the OBJ. Import. There it is. So okay. So strange things happen to the normals. This is just a normal display issue, right? What we should do here, just select all the objects. It's not it's not a huge deal, but we can just do unlock normals. So we'll unlock normals. And then I could do soften normals. So you see 
it's displaying more soft. But this is going to be subdivided anyways. So I, what I would probably do is just like unlock normals. I'll go hard and edge. Delete history. Free transformations. Okay, great. Perfect. Export. The, this is what it's going to look like when you import it. It should look like this. So let's try. Export. Because we're saving the normal information in the OBJ. So if I export and I replace this and we'll make a new scene. And we'll import. And we'll do cup. Yeah, so see now that's what it looks like. We have something called, there's the possibility of smoothing the normals. So soften edge. Doesn't look right. Uh -huh. Yeah, see when you subdivide, it's not going to be an issue, but for, let's talk about that for a second. So when I make, a, if I make a polygonal sphere in Maya, it looks pretty smooth, right? This is a polygonal sphere. Just create polygons sphere. It looks pretty smooth. But that's also partially due to the normals. So they're the normal angle. So you're actually looking at this surface. It's averaging out the light information. So it's not really casting light. This is, the, remember the face normals? So we have face normals. This is the way each poly is reflecting the light. So we should expect to see a more faceted sort of reflection because this would reflect light here, this would reflect light there, there. But it's averaging out that result because of the normals. But there's a way to just set it so that it doesn't do that. And that's hardened edge. Now it's reflecting more the light in a more natural fashion the way it actually would be reflecting. So in more low poly, if you don't necessarily have to have a huge poly count to make things look kind of smooth. So if I'm making, um, let's say this is also the cylinder, same thing goes for that. So you can get away with surprising the little polys here. If I have like eight polys, this could be, I don't know, some sort of column or a street light or something. But I need to soften the normals because right now there's it's it's they're pretty hard. So I can do select these normals or these edges and go soften edge. And you'll see now it looks pretty smooth. Even though there's a very few <laughs> very few polys, but it's just averaging out the ref light reflection. So if I copy that and we compare it to well, if I had a lot more edge edges, if I set it to harden edge, but then I inserted, let's say it's just smooth it. I'm gonna insert some creasing edges and then smooth. I just smooth it a lot. You see, oh, so also actually the smooth operation will, remember we said what it did, it actually, it quadruples the poly count Uh, smooth. It, it quadruples the polys each time you press it. It also uh, makes this continuity like this curved result based on the placement of the vertices. But a third thing it does is it also actually softens the normals, softens the normals. So again, I can set this to hard, hardened edge if I wanted. So Sometimes we have to be aware of, of the normal information. And when you do this, if I delete history, and I have only soft normals on so a select number of edges, 
if I save this now as an OBJ, that information is should be stored with the OBJ. So let's try that. So export this. And this is just like a whatever column. And then I go new scene. And I import it. So you see, there's our column. So it, it keeps that soft and normal information. So anyways, but that's also something that we could bake into a map called the normal map, or have the normal information. Yeah, so one other thing on the checklist of things to do could be like to unlock the normals. Uh, you can also conform the normals and then just make them look the way you want and then export the OBJ. But then you would keep the, actually keep the history state uh, if I'm softening the normals. And then now export it. And it should look like this when I import it. Oh yeah, that, that was the scene, sorry. Yep, and there it is. But pressing number three, we're subdividing anyways, so it doesn't matter. So, so that's how you build all these uh, assets, just centered in the grid, be very structured. You make uh, whatever, you know, all of the assignment uh, says, like a spoon and the teapot. And just assemble everything in a new scene. And then also, eventually you need to pay attention to having a correct scale, like we talked about this morning. So all the units are centimeters, so you can make a measuring cube and set it to whatever centimeters you want. So if you have a meter, this is a cubic meter, 100, 100, 100. That's a meter. So then why is the grid so tiny? It's just tiny. So we go display, grid, options. I added a couple of zeros. There you go. And then the other thing was the clipping planes with the camera. But yeah. So now you see our cup is actually kind of tiny as well. So I can do control G scale it up, scale up the group, and do precise measures for it. So it's obviously not too late to scale things because polys, these, there is obviously relative. You know, even after you UV map, your texture resolution would not necessarily be dependent on the size of the polygons, which is something we'll get back to. So, any final questions? There are so many ways to achieve this shape, and there are so many also inefficient ways of going about it. Uh, so, but it's kind of hard sometimes to find the easiest solution for something. And it's okay, you don't always have to do, do it the easiest way, but I think if you find yourself really stuck in, a, in the modeling something and it's just not going anywhere and you see you have, you're sort of lost in all the polys like you don't know then I'd suggest probably taking taking another approach like starting over see if you can arrive at the same shapes in a simpler fashion because it's, it's it can be pretty simple you know you have to like I'm explaining everything I'm doing here it takes takes a while but 
really this this sort of evolution will lead to very clean topology it's all quads it's all sort of logical but this shape if i'm not if i don't activate the polys there's no way of telling what the po what the topology looks like if uh you know this could be any it could be constructed in any shape or form i can just add whatever edges i want but let me activate the we have a nice tool here called cut faces tool where did you go I can't see it. Eh, maybe they changed it. Can't find cut faces tool. Maybe they removed it then. Don't know why they would do that though. Anyways, but as you probably realize, there's no automatic way. You know, these polys could have been assembled in a very, very different way. It could have looked like this. See, this is not altering the shape, well, not too much, of the cup. See, if I go to object mode, it'll still look like the shape. There's no way of telling. Only when I select the cup would I see that this is now a horrible topology. This is a horrible topology. And this will could influence like the reflections. Uh, and, you know, so that's what I'm saying. If you find yourself really struggling too much with a piece, try to try to take a simple approach. Build it up step by step gradually. And because I think chances are you'll arrive at, at a more logical topology. Don't over complicate things. But that's easy to say. Okay. All right. Good. Good luck.